how are, how are average middle class families with a couple of kids going to survive? I, I don't know. Eggs are like $10 for, for a dozen. That's like 80 cents an egg. Bread, like $5 a loaf. Yeah. Uh, milk, uh, you can pay up to $5 a quart. That's just crazy. Yeah, I thought it was going to rain today. Yeah, we dodged that, but So what do homeless people need the most? Oh, man. Family. I mean, to me, that's the most heartbreaking thing of all, is most of the people are disenfranchised from their families. So it's... Broken it's, families. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes they choose to not associate. Sometimes their family members choose not to associate. But in any event, it's really heartbreaking. People... Your family's like, that's the most important thing in the world. So, which is probably why God says, anybody who you find orphan, take them into your household as a member of your own family. So, uh, but I think, ultimately, only the government can, can even approach trying to solve this problem because it requires oversight of medical institutions, a number of things, and I think only the government can solve those. So, either the state and or federal government needs to be involved. The county should not be involved. You know, outsourcing the problem to the county is a, is a huge mistake. It's just a huge mistake. And, you know, private shelter institutions need more law enforcement presence, which you don't have in the shelters. I don't know. I, I, I have very strong opinions, but I don't believe the system we have in place right now works, and the problem is only going to get worse, and I don't think the country has any idea how to solve the problem. More and more people are going to end up on the street as the economic conditions worsen. You said that uh, around the country it's going to get worse. What about in Hawaii? Oh, I think in Hawaii it'll be, it'll, especially in Hawaii, because Hawaii doesn't manufacture anything. Really, we have no middle class here. You have all these really wealthy people, and then you've got sort of people who live on the street, and people work two jobs here just to make ends meet. And uh, as economic conditions worsen, people won't come to Hawaii because there won't be discretionary income. If there's no discretionary income, you don't have money to, for the plane fare and the hotels. So if the tourism industry suffers in Hawaii, then the economic conditions in Hawaii suffer. That's so why, as far as I can tell, we don't produce automobiles. We have no high-tech industry here that I'm aware of, at least an extensive one. So we don't have the, the fundamental conditions that sort of buffer economic decline in problems. So I think in Hawaii it could even be worse. Eggs are like $10 for, for a dozen. That's like 80 cents an egg. Bread in, 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 the, in the regular stores is like five dollars a loaf yeah. uh, milk uh, you can pay up to five dollars a quart I mean, how are how are average middle class families with a couple of kids going to survive i i don't know that's a, that's outrageous that's just crazy and they, the prices just are going up and i don't have a sense that the current administration or even the previous administration has a clue as to how to solve the problem how to how to sort of curtail the spiraling inflation. So how did you come out here? Why did you come out here? Oh uh, well I was evicted from my house in California. I am the descendant of a Pearl Harbor survivor. So I thought well things might be livable here and the weather certainly is good. How did you have the money for the plane ticket? I still had resources at that time. I still had resources at that time. So in fact I had resources when I came here but I got robbed. So then, then my resources were curtailed. And uh, in twenty nine in twenty twenty when COVID broke, I went back to Los Angeles to, to see about the, all my financial problems in Los Angeles and to my family. 
family, and plus I, I thought COVID might be really bad here. So, uh, but I flew into a lockdown in Los Angeles. But I stayed in Los Angeles for about two years, and uh, then I came back here in October. So this is my second tour of duty. What advice do you have for anyone that's considering moving to Hawaii? Um, well, I don't know. Uh, it's beautiful. It's dangerous. <laughs> it's, the most interesting, it's a very interesting state. I think part of the reason is because you have three governments here. You have the U.S. federal government, the Hawaiian state government, and the Hawaiian monarchy. And uh, it, it's just an interesting place. It's the only state in the Union with a non-Caucasian majority, which makes it very interesting. So, uh, it's an interesting state. Um, uh, you know, I, I can't praise it too much or condemn it too much. So, it's, uh, uh, my cousin lives here, and uh, uh, I, I made some friends here the first time I came here, so that's why I returned. And, uh, but we'll, we'll see what happens if things, if things get hairy, I might go back to, to California. And eventually I have to do anyway to see about what's going on with my house. Yeah. And, uh, thank God my two kids are grown and, uh, and my wife is a veterinarian. She's steadily employed. So my family doesn't need me. So apparently my country doesn't need me. My family doesn't need me. So God still needs me. So I hang around. But, uh, preaching. So, preaching. Things I think that are problematic. One is you have this burgeoning war. You have the Earth's weakening magnetic field, and then you have the worsening economic conditions of the world. And so those are three rather formidable problems, and that's why I think you're going to hear more and more preaching. All, all religious faiths. Are you religious? Yeah, I'm very religious. Except I don't. What religion? I don't belong to uh, any particular religious institutions. Have you heard of the Baha'i faith? Yeah, I actually taught a couple students who were the Baha'i faith. I don't, I don't know too much about it, but I've heard that's one that kind of incorporates a lot of different elements uh, and. Uh, well, I'm kind of weird because I'm sort of an Orthodox Jew. I strictly, as best I can, without being related to an institution, observe what I can of the Jewish faith. But my parents are Muslim. So wow. it's really, I call myself a Jew move. So, uh, <laughs> are you from a Caucasian background? You know, it's kind of interesting. Um, the parents who raised me in Southern California are my birth parents. And my mother, who raised me in Southern California, is half Powhatan Indian. So I am actually not by birth or not by blood, but by association, about a quarter Powhatan Indian. So, but yeah, I think genetically, I'm from the Middle East, Caucasian Middle East. Oh, you did mention uh, Tel Aviv. Yeah, I was conceived in Tel Aviv, Israel. So I'm a neonatal Israeli hash. So your biological parents are Jewish? Yeah, they are. And uh, and who you grew up with was Native American. Yeah. There is a major rabbi who arose in the Chabad movement called the Rebbe. His name is Menachem Mendel Schneerson. He is the sixth Lubavitcher Rebbe of the Chabad movement. All of Hasidic Judaism arises from a single rabbi named the Baal Shem Tov. Take a look at the picture of the Rebbe. I look exactly like him. Oh yeah? Oh, stop the video. Can you get the uh, internet? How do you feel about the police? Uh, well, I have no qualms about police officers. Um, other than, like I said, the institution can sometimes be corrupt and be used for the wrong purposes. And, uh, I'm kind of old-fashioned. I think everybody should carry, carry, carry weapons and protect themselves. And it's time for dinner. I gotta go eat. Okay. God bless you. Yeah. Have Thank a good you. one. Thanks for talking to me. Uh huh.